Hey there, Mr. Redder here. Welcome back to another episode of r slash Entitled People Stories. Our first story we'll be reading today. My Karen neighbors and the cops are demanding to use my driveway. After that, my husband ate some of my chocolate, so I made him drive across the city to replace it. And after that, am I the jerk for saying I don't want to be in pictures at my wedding as the bride? Now for every thumbs up this video gets, one Karen doesn't get to use anyone else's driveway. I don't even have a car. So please smash that like button and subscribe and turn on notifications for new stories from Reddit every single day. My Karen neighbors and the cops are demanding to use my driveway. Going to begin by saying that legally I am in the clear. It's my property and I can do as I wish with it. I bought a piece of land and had a house built on it recently. There was a gravel road, now it's paved, that has become my driveway. I guess before I lived there, the locals used it to get around faster. I've been told that if they can't use my driveway, it makes the travel 15 minutes longer. This started when I moved in. The stuff like the yard and surrounding area was not finished, but it was complete enough to move in. My driveway is long and can be exited and entered from two sides. With how the house is built for them to use my driveway as a shortcut, a lot of traffic would have to pass right by my house and cars every day. This isn't just people driving. People on bikes and walkers want to use it too. I simply do not want the whole town using my driveway every day. I realized it was a problem when I moved in and I could constantly hear cars driving through all hours of the night or voices of people talking and people walking right past the cars. I understood that this property was vacant for a while so I put up signs saying that this is private property. You can clearly see a house there and I'm sure they saw it being built. No change. So I put up gates that only my wife and I have access to. It doesn't deter the walkers, but I have plans for that. This caused a big fuss. I've had numerous people knock on my door asking why I put a gate up, saying they will be late to school or work. I had a guy say I made him late to an interview. I just tell everyone that this is private property and that this house didn't just appear here. You saw the signs if this was a route that you use daily. Apparently, the police used this as a speed trap area and I've had police ask me to open the gates. I tell them no. My wife normally is the type to let people use the driveway, but this wasn't normal. Imagine the whole town using it like a shortcut. There was so much traffic constantly. The first complaint I got before the gates were up was when I parked my car on the driveway and not on the part in front of my house because it was blocking the traffic. I responded, the traffic on my property? I've had cops tell me I'm obstructing their work. My direct neighbors understand, but town people are just upset that their shortcut is gone. They're all pretty upset about the house being here altogether. People would park their cars all over the driveway and my property during sporting events. High school football is important around here. I'm not trying to be an evil neighbor. Am I the jerk? Edit. For those wondering, yes, I've talked to lawyers and this is my property. I initially didn't want the two outlets because to me it looks odd. I only have one entrance to my driveway paved and the other one is gravel. I was just going to leave it but now I will just remove the outlet entirely. My land is still under construction and there will be a fence going completely around my property. Not the jerk. It's your property and they can't use it anymore. They will just have to get used to going the long way around. If the locals wanted this road so much, then they should have had their town purchase the land and made it a public road. They didn't. Now they have to deal with it. Not the jerk. It's your home and your property. Seriously, building a home takes time. They should have realized things were changing. And the cops don't need to use your property as a speed trap. You're the jerk. This is why I disagree with the concept of private property. Because you want to make people's lives more difficult than they already are, you're trying to stop them from using a road that they've used since long before you arrived. Why can't you just be cool and respect that this is a helpful road to everyone? Except the police. I wouldn't let them use it either. I make their lives harder anytime I can because we just don't need them at all. But that's another story. Well, who do you think is the jerk? OP or everyone else? Please let us know. Whenever you have trouble with people using your driveway and you want them to stop, nails can really come in handy. My husband ate some of my chocolate, so I made him drive across the city to replace it. I'm eight and a half months pregnant and driving sucks. So my mom drives me around because my husband is working long hours to get ahead before the baby comes. Last month, she drove me to my favorite chocolate store and I stocked up on my favorite flavors. The store has dozens of flavors of chocolate individually wrapped in colorful foil so you can tell the flavor. 
The store is about an hour's drive away from our home. My husband knows my favorite flavor. Half the bag was originally that flavor, but by now, it's just even with the others. He came home from work yesterday, and after supper, we were going to sit and watch TV. I waddled over to the couch and asked him to please bring me two of my chocolates. He did, and he grabbed a few for himself. No problem there. He came back to the couch with chocolates in his mouth. When he kissed me, I knew what flavor he took. He admitted he took the Stracciatella ones, my favorite. I got kind of upset, and he said it was no big deal. I could go with my mom and get some more. Yes, this company sells their chocolate everywhere, but that flavor, I've only ever seen this flavor in their store. I asked if he's been eating that flavor a lot, and his face told me everything I needed to know. I yelled at him that it's not like it's easy for me to sit in a car for two hours. He said he would go out right now and replace them. He hit a couple of stores and a couple of grocery stores, and they all told him the same thing. He drove across town and came back with a big bag of just that flavor. While he was gone, I called my mom and she said I need to calm down because my hormones are making me crazy. I apologized to my husband, but he's still grumpy that he drove around for hours just to get me chocolate. I think he should know better than to eat my favorite flavor. I know this isn't as big a problem as some of the other stuff on here. Edit. My husband is wonderful and he went out looking to replace my chocolate. After he didn't find it nearby, he chose to drive across town. I didn't force him to do it. When I said I made him do it, I meant he did it to make me happy. Sorry for any confusion. I clearly recall sobbing during my first pregnancy over a brand of potato chips that was discontinued and my husband came home with an unsuitable, to me, replacement. It was ridiculous. And years later, we laugh about it. So will you. Best wishes for a smooth birth and a healthy baby. I vividly remember when I was pregnant with my son, ordering Hawaiian barbecue from a local restaurant, specifically the teriyaki beef. My partner went to pick it up and they had forgotten to include the teriyaki sauce that comes on the side, but it also is what makes it so delicious. And you know, teriyaki. I cried hysterically and couldn't even rationalize why I was so upset. My partner, bless him, drove back to the store and came back with boatloads of teriyaki sauce. I'm not proud of that moment, in hindsight, but pregnancy really does make you a bit nuts, and food cravings are no joke. Not the jerk. In a year, you will both be laughing about this. This is the real marriage stuff no one talks about. You're a team. You're hormonal and pregnant. He went and got your special chocolate. I'd probably just start cracking jokes about it and say sorry for being a bit extra. You're the jerk. Wife yells at her husband. Ha ha, this is funny. Husband yells at wife. He's a monster. You need to divorce him. You deserve so much better. Wife says she made her husband do something or allowed him to do something. Nobody bats an eye. Husband says this kind of stuff. Everyone loses their mind. Read it in a nutshell. P.S. Being pregnant doesn't excuse you for acting like a total jerk. I'm so sick of hearing that it does. P.P.S. For all you geniuses who are upset by my comment, I'm a woman now in my 60s. I've had three pregnancies throughout my life and never felt the need to act like a jerk to anyone because I was pregnant. Sure, there were days where I felt horrible, but I never took that out on my husband or anyone else. Just because you don't feel good does not excuse you to mistreat others. I'd love to see how you bozos react to a story where the husband is sick and he's the one treating people like crap. Well, what do you think? Is OP the jerk or not? Please let us know. If I were pregnant, I'd make you get me tendies every night, Reddit boy. If you were pregnant, tendies would be the least of my worries. Am I the jerk for saying I don't want to be in the pictures at my wedding as the bride? My fiancé's family never held back on jabs about my nose. My fiancé said he knew they really loved me the moment they started with the jokes. They're the kind of family that loves to make fun of each other. My grandparents used to make comments about my nose that were kind of crappy. In general, I've tried to not be so sensitive about it because they don't like sensitive people. Although my history with it and knowing my nose came from my dad, who I don't know, made it a bit harder for me. My fiancé made this comment once, which was supposed to be joking and sweet, where he basically said he was so lucky for my nose because it was the only way he had a chance with me. That comment stayed in my head since. The idea that I'd actually be beautiful if it wasn't for my nose. I've had really bad self-esteem and I would go in and out of believing I'm ugly. I started thinking about having a nose job. After we got engaged, I realized if I was going to do it, I should do it before the wedding. He was really supportive of the idea and excited for it. He made some comments about being glad I was losing the beak, 
something he had never expressed before I suggested it, which confirmed to me that I needed it. My fiancé loves my new nose. I hate it so much. I feel like I'm staring at someone else's face. I feel like any other woman in the world besides myself. I've always struggled with depression, and I was finally in a good place before this. Now, I can barely get myself to leave my room for work. My fiancé is really frustrated with me. He thinks I, objectively, look better, and I need to get used to it. I know I'll have to, but I've been wearing a medical mask in the house because I can't stand to look at my face. He says this is me sulking like a toddler, but I can't control how I feel. He asked what I was going to do at our wedding, and I told him that I don't want to be in any of the pictures. He freaked out, saying my selfishness was going to get in the way of us having a happy wedding. I didn't want to let this hurt him, so I tried to come up with options like wearing my veil covering my face in the pictures, incorporating a scarf into the outfit, wearing my mask, etc. And he said if I do any of that, we might as well not get married at all. That hurt a lot. I can't stand to see myself in pictures like this, and having everybody see my nose the whole day would make this even worse for me. I'm already going to be blaming myself for the fact that I won't have my nose in pictures. I feel like I'm ruining the day for him, but what he wants will ruin it for me. Am I the jerk? Edit. I thought I would add a comment I wrote to the post since I've seen a lot of people who are very worried about me. Thank you to everyone who's written comments trying to help me. Sorry I haven't responded to a lot of specific people. It's a little bit overwhelming, but I'm reading everyone's comments. Thanks so much to everyone who's given a judgment and advice. Everyone has been so kind to me at my lowest right now. I really need to get back into therapy. I'm trying to look into getting another nose job to reverse this, but I don't know if any plastic surgeon would be willing or able to give me the beak back, and I'm terrified of getting surgery again. I just want to feel comfortable in my skin again. As much as I know, logically, I should be able to get used to this over time, I really don't feel like I can. Everybody is suggesting we should postpone the wedding, and I think that makes a lot of sense. I don't know how my fiancé is going to feel about that. I love him, but a lot of these comments are making me think more deeply into how he treats me. He's this very sweet guy normally, introverted, very smart, always there when I need him, etc. But he's not being that guy right now. Not the jerk at all, but your fiancé is. His comment about the beak was stone cold cruel. His remark about your nose being the only way he'd have a chance with you is telling. He is superficial and shallow and inconsiderate, and I really hope you realize you deserve much better before the wedding rolls around. OP, this is way above Reddit's pay grade. You're engaged to be married to a man who, along with his family, has needlessly bullied you about your appearance to the point that you had plastic surgery to try to fix yourself. Not only do you regret this surgery now, but it, along with the bullying you've experienced, has destroyed your mental health. Do you truly want to spend the rest of your life like this? Do you really want to marry a man who giddily told you that he was happy you were getting rid of your beak, then admonished you for having regrets? Please take all of this into consideration and try to remember that your crappy fiancé and his equally crappy family don't get to determine your self-worth. Only you do. For all intents of this being a judgment sub, not the jerk, but you haven't been very kind to yourself either, and you will be the jerk if you don't remember who the heck you are and put a stop to your fiancé and his family's BS. Parents made every single birthday about my sister for the last eight years. I'm 18 this year, and fairly recently on my own from my parents. I have a sister about 10 years younger than me. She was an unplanned pregnancy and didn't make it to term. I don't know many of the details of how rough my mother's second pregnancy was since I was never told much, but I do know that it was so hard on her body that my mother could no longer have kids after my sister was born. She was in and out of the hospital repeatedly that year. My mother almost didn't survive the birth either. It made her and my father latch on to my little sister because she could have potentially never been born. And ever since then, I felt like I was just the other kid in the house, except for when they needed me as a free babysitter. The level of favoritism my parents showed long term has me believing they were genuinely sick in the head for not noticing exactly what it was doing to me. And now it's rebounding on them, which I'll explain here. Starting with my 11th birthday, my parents wanted me to let my sister blow out my candles because she was two years old and cried at the sight of a birthday cake that wasn't hers. I didn't want to do it, but my parents forced me into it. They relit the candles for me to do it again after her, but the moment felt completely ruined. The same thing happened the next year and the year after that and so on and so forth. They just kept forcing it until it became the norm. 
My sister had to have presents on my birthdays as well. I never got any on hers either. And when I asked why, they just told me that I'm a boy and boys don't need to worry about it as much. I know I was a kid, but did they really think that was a smart thing to say? Not really. And my parents would always choose a place my sister would like to be at more than me on my own birthday. Eventually, it became more like my sister was getting two birthdays a year and I got none. Beyond this, my parents made their entire lives revolve around my sister. If there's something I wanted to do, my sister had to want to do it too. Otherwise, it was vetoed, unless I could do it alone. I learned to just lock myself in my room with my video games because they didn't seem to bother me there. Unless my sister wanted to come running in to annoy me, hence why I put a lock on my door. My sister developed quite the princess complex because of how she was being spoiled on a daily basis, and she was very demanding. So I stayed away from her as much as I feasibly could. Whatever excuse I could use to not have to deal with her. Even if I had to make stuff up just to have time to myself. My parents hired a teen girl babysitter and I got more personal time. And then the babysitter quit because my sister wouldn't listen to her. And my parents tried to keep from paying by saying that she did a bad job. The girl got some other people involved and my parents finally paid her what they owed her. Then they hired another girl to babysit on the regular. And this one stayed but my parents still made it clear that I was to be watching my sister any day I had free, which I went out of my way to be busy at my part-time job if I could. My sister treated me as her personal butler and ordered me around. She even had a stupid nickname for me she wouldn't stop using. Just hearing that nickname makes my blood boil, and if I didn't give her everything she wanted, she'd cry and call our parents, and then I'd be in trouble for mistreating her. We had many massive arguments because of this, and after I refused to yield anymore, my relationship with my parents devolved into barely any words spoken between us for some time. And yet, during my high school graduation, they had the nerve to brag to other parents that they were the reason I worked so hard. Well, they weren't wrong. But the reason they were thinking of was not the one that actually happened. I worked hard, just biding my time for when I'd be free. But my parents acted like they'd done so much. Maybe they did before my sister was born. But afterwards, it was all about her. They didn't even ask me about school until parent-teacher conferences came up. I graduated with a B and C average. And after my graduation, my parents just took me to some place where my sister would always have more fun than me. Even though the trip was supposed to be for me. On my 18th birthday in July though, things really boiled to the surface. Even though it was my 18th birthday, it didn't feel like it was about me at all. I hoped to God that we were going to my favorite restaurant for once, but no, they had the party at the local knockoff Chuck E. Cheese, which is the only place like it nearby to us. So it was the de facto celebratory destination whenever anything big was achieved, including my high school graduation. I did say it was a place my sister would enjoy more than me. I was surrounded by kids half my age having parties, and I was so bored with nothing to do but eat mediocre pizza and play claw machines and dated arcade games for tickets to cheaply made prizes that brought me no joy. Then when it was time for cake, my parents came out with one that was pink with white flowers on it. Sure, it had my name on it, but it was very obviously not a boy's cake, and there was only 10 candles. My parents lit the candles and set it right in front of my sister to blow out. That's when it finally happened. I just had this mental moment of all the pent-up hate mentally flashing before me, and then I just started ugly crying. I, an 18-year-old boy, was crying in front of the whole family. Everyone was so shocked that time seemed to just freeze. I got up and all of the stuff I had been holding in me for the past 8 years just spilled out like word vomit. The entire family got to be witness at this event, and when it was finally over, I just walked outside to sit by the family car. Several relatives trailed out after me to say they were sorry and that they didn't know about the pink cake because my parents kept it covered until it was served. I said it didn't matter that they didn't know. They all sat back and watched as my life was taken over by Little Miss Sunshine for the past eight years. I had no real birthdays or celebrations of my own. They were all about her. And then, on the biggest birthday of my life, they all expected me to just smile and nod like always while they handed my sister a cake that was entirely meant for her when it wasn't even her birthday. Some of them started giving me apologies, but they made the excuse that all this time they just thought I was okay with it because my parents said I was. I told them I was never okay with it, and my parents forced it on me every year so I just pretended to accept it. 
I spread my arms out and said to look where we were. Does this look like a place I wanted to celebrate my graduation and 18th birthday? No one even tried to stick up for me all this time. I'm just the other kid while my sister gets everything. I didn't even get to have any of my friends there because my parents stopped letting me invite them long ago after they tried to voice their opinions over my sister getting to blow out my candles. There are 365 days a year, and was it so bad to want one that was about me and not her? Instead, I'm treated like the greedy entitled brat for wanting my own birthday. Then I just went back to ugly crying. My father came outside by that point to yell at me for making such a huge scene, because my mother was crying too. My sister was upset because I ruined her moment, and now everybody in there who saw thinks they're bad parents. I ended up yelling at him that they are bad parents, and he should know exactly why. Well, after I said that, the rest of the family descended on him like a pack of wolves. Better late than never, I suppose, but I'd never seen anything like it before. My father was practically backed right up to the restaurant front door, and then most of the crowd flooded back inside with him to have it out with my mother too. My grandparents stayed with me and apologized for having their eyes shut so tight for so long. I don't know what was said to my parents in the restaurant, but it was roughly a half hour before they came back out, and when they did, they looked incredibly defeated. My mother was still sniffling after crying so hard, and neither of my parents could look me in the eyes. They both awkwardly apologized for what they did, and then offered to redo the party somewhere else. But that wasn't really enough for the crowd. One of my uncles ahemmed rather loudly, and my parents said they'd never make me let my sister blow out my candles again, or give her presents on my birthday, or make any part of it about her. There was another ahem, and my parents also apologized for getting a cake that was obviously not even meant for me and that they felt like I wasn't worried about cake anymore at my age. Oh boy, was that the wrong thing to say. I became furious all over again and yelled at them that my age was irrelevant. They had literally given my birthday to my sister and had no good reason as to why, and they knew it. Then I said there was no point in redoing the party because it's too darn late. They clearly showed that I mean nothing to them. They ruined eight years of my life till I became an adult. What future birthdays with them could I possibly look forward to? Well, my father started to get angry at me for saying that, but when the entire family yelled at him, he shut up. My grandfather told him I'm exactly right, and there is no possible way they can undo the damage done now. He said my parents were awful people, played favorites, and treated me like a black sheep ever since my sister was born. And what's more, they were all awful themselves because they just let this happen too, and I'm owed far more than an apology. I was owed my life back. My mother broke down again and tried to come closer to me while crying my name and apologizing, but I refused to let her anywhere near me, and half the family blocked her from getting close. I just said I couldn't take this anymore and started to walk away. One of my aunts chased me down and brought me back. I could hear multiple family members yelling and going off on my parents over what had happened, but I was so upset I couldn't even feel happy for any bit of the justice after all this time. Also, where was my sister when this was all going on? She was still in the restaurant, all by herself, eating cake and ripping open presents that were there for me. And if anyone was wondering, yes, my parents served her some cake after I cried and walked out. You'd think doing that wouldn't be their primary focus in the moment, but they were called out on it later. My grandparents got me to calm down and sit in their old minivan while everyone else cleared out the party. My sister threw a huge tantrum after being caught opening my presents one of which was a brand new smartphone that she threw against the wall and broke because she wasn't allowed to keep it. She literally just got a brand new phone on her own birthday a few months earlier. I ended up being so upset that I was ranting that I never wanted to celebrate my birthday again, and my grandparents let me stay the night over at their house. When I came home, I still didn't speak to my parents. My mother just kept crying because I wouldn't talk to her, and my father was as closed-mouthed as me. The following weekend, my grandparents convinced me to go with them out to dinner, and when we got there, I was surprised to find a whole new party waiting for me. My parents were there, and they kept up with having the don't hate us smiles on their faces almost the entire time. There was a big chocolate cake with 18 candles on it, and there was even a banner with my name. They called it my happy belated birthday graduation party because I didn't really get either this year. I did kind of have to pretend to be happy. One good party doesn't undo eight years of favoritism or even make a dent in it really. And where was my sister? 
She was sitting at the table with her arms folded and her lip curled because it wasn't all about her like it used to be. And rather than sing happy birthday for me, they just sang an altered version of happy day. Then as soon as I blew out the candles, my sister screamed. I mean an ear-bleedingly loud scream. My parents had to rush her out and then bring her back in later, looking more upset than ever. She quietly pouted in her seat for the rest of the party. I did still get a new smartphone as well, and my sister got hers taken away, among other things, for what she did at the prior party. But the smartphone wasn't all. The whole family had chipped in and gotten me a car. It was just an old white Volvo, but I loved it the moment I laid my eyes on it. My grandfather knows a thing or two about cars and fixed it up himself. I was so happy, but my sister clearly was not, because she let out another one of those screams. She started having a massive tantrum and demanding a car too. My mother had to take her into the bathroom and they didn't come back out for a while. My father just went back to looking defeated. My sister had effectively ruined their attempt at trying to look good in front of the whole family. Multiple family members also had strong words for my parents that my sister was acting that way because they raised her to be a princess spoiled brat. I obviously started driving the car around right away, but only days later my sister actually vandalized the car by taking a hammer and breaking two of the side windows and cracking the windshield to the point that the car was undrivable. My parents managed to stop her before she did any more damage, but she screamed when they grabbed her and took the hammer away, then tried to bite them. Oh, everyone was furious with my sister, especially my grandparents, because my grandfather had put so much work into that car and my sister ruined it while having a massive tantrum. My grandparents had spoiled my sister so badly that she couldn't mentally comprehend that I could have something she couldn't, and several other family members laid into my parents about how they were setting my sister up for failure by making her an entitled brat that expects the world to be given to her. And she's going to have a terrible adult life because they won't put their feet down and teach her some respect. Well, her actions didn't go unpunished. My sister was grounded for the rest of the summer and effective of the next school year was being sent to boarding school. My mother cried like a baby about that too, but my father had to be adamant that it was the only way to start undoing the damage they had done. Yes, they fully acknowledged they are at fault. It was kind of hard for them not to since no one sided with them at all. My sister is absolutely miserable at that school. She hates the clothes, she hates the rules, and she's been lying almost constantly. But with cameras almost everywhere now, she's not getting away with any of it. Our parents tried to visit her a few times, but she screamed at them for putting her in that place. From what I hear, this may be her school life until she's 18 years old. My parents did pay to fix the car. They had an auto glass company replace the windows and windshield, and it looks just like it did before. In August, my grandfather came to me and said if I was interested, he found me a job working for a friend. It was 40 miles away, so I'd need to move out of my parents' house unless I wanted that commute. I was all for moving. Finding a first apartment wasn't so easy though. I had to get approved for a credit card just to get accepted for a studio. But I got it, and I've been living where I am now since September. My parents keep trying to contact me, but I rarely speak to them. Anytime we do speak, I just feel awkward and uncomfortable. My grandfather has suggested that they simply don't want to acknowledge how badly they failed as parents and trying to get me to forgive them will make them feel better about themselves or something like that. But I'm not going to forgive, not anytime soon. I'm finally happy and away from them. Now they've got nothing. They don't have me and they don't have my sister. And my parents had to take more hours at work because boarding school for my sister is not cheap. Nor can I imagine was the party they had to throw for me or the repairs to the car empty house, angry relatives, and the only thing they have left is their work. Feels like incredible misery to me, and I don't take delight in it, but it is the result of their own actions after all. Am I the jerk for moving out because I don't want to help my boyfriend out with the rent? My boyfriend, 26 male, and I, 24 female, have been together for three years. We live in New York City, and he makes over $200,000 a year, while I'm studying for my master's in social work and have no income. Right now, I'm doing an unpaid, year-long internship three days a week, as well as classes two days a week. It's rare to get a paid internship in social work, plus internships are mandatory. I spend 12 hours every day either working, studying, commuting, or in class. My only free days are on weekends, so I have no time for a paid job. My mom helps me financially by paying for my Metro card and healthcare expenses, but everything else I rely on loans. 
Before I moved in with my boyfriend, there was a roach infestation in my apartment, so I'd stay over at his place a lot. My lease was ending soon, so he asked me if I wanted to live with him. At first, I joked with him that his living standards would go down since I can't afford a nice place, but he insisted on paying the rent until I finished grad school. Then we would split the rent based on income. I originally wanted to live in a cheaper place in Queens or Brooklyn, but my boyfriend likes his current place and insisted I move in since he would be the one paying the rent. So I moved into his $5,000 a month luxury condo in the city this August. All of a sudden, my boyfriend recently started asking me to pay half of the rent, $2,500 a month. I was confused because he was the one who wanted to pay the rent in full. Apparently, he was talking to his friends and they all think it's weird that I don't pay rent and that I was a gold digger. I let my boyfriend know that I can't afford $2,500 a month and he said I was leeching off of him. So I told him that he should find someone within his social class so he doesn't have to worry about a gold digger like me leeching off of him. I stayed at my friend's place for a few days while figuring out what to do. I called my mom about my situation and she's willing to help me out, but the maximum she can afford for rent is $800. I found some places in Queens within the price range, less than 15 minutes away from the city and a bus ride away from my school, so I went to check them out a couple days ago. I've been texting the landlord and my new roommates and I already signed the lease. I told my boyfriend about my new place and he got upset and asked me to stay. He said that he was willing to accept $800 a month instead of $2,500 a month if that's all I can afford. But I told him I don't want him changing his mind again and demanding more money from me in the future. He lived in this condo alone for several years so it's not like he can't afford to live there without my help. I wouldn't mind splitting rent with him but I would have to live in a more affordable place outside of Manhattan like I originally wanted. Apparently, some of our mutual friends think I'm being unreasonable for moving out instead of talking to him and staying by paying the amount I can afford in rent, and that I shouldn't have let him pay my portion of the rent. Update. Yes, I did dump him. I blocked him and his idiot friends on everything. My friends also blocked him since he tried to contact me through them. I'm going to enjoy being single and never relying on a man financially ever again. Not the jerk. They think you're being unreasonable? That's rich. He literally convinced you to move into his apartment, turning down your offers to find a cheaper place so you could contribute. The fact that his friends see you as a gold digger and don't appear to know the full story, the fact that you offered to pay and to find a cheaper place and he insisted otherwise is also a red flag to me and makes me question how he talks about you to his friends. Come watch this video next. You won't believe what Karen does in that one.